Hey, are you okay? Okay? I'm better than okay, man. I think I picked up a new trick. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. yeah. Definitely new and improved. New and improved? Yep. I can definitely say that for Infamous Second Son. Welcome everyone to the series on my channel where instead of doing reviews, I share my thoughts with my fellow gamers. So, let's get started. Today I will share my thoughts with you about Infamous Second Son and whether or not you should buy it. Having thoroughly enjoyed the first two Infamous games, I was very curious when Sucker Punch Studios announced Infamous Second Son as one of the launch titles for the PS4. From the get-go, I was very interested to see where the series would go. However, before I share my thoughts with you about Infamous Second Son, let me take a moment and share with you why I enjoyed the very first Infamous game on the PlayStation 3. The video games industry has seen a share of superhero characters over the past many years, and therefore when Sucker Punch Studios introduced Infamous 1 years ago, it was amazing to me that a studio was able to create a brand new badass superhero like Cole McGrath and they actually made me care about this character. I enjoyed Infamous 1 because it truly made me feel like a superhero. And it wasn't just the awesome controls and gameplay that gave me this feeling. It was the epic and well-delivered story that had multiple endings depending on whether you finished the game with good karma or evil karma. Even grinding and doing side missions was fun. And why? Because the character development was unique and every time I was rewarded with a new power, I couldn't wait to try it. Games like Prototype tried to introduce a new superhero story, however in my honest opinion these games were not able to recreate the magic of the Infamous series. So with that background on Infamous 1, let's now talk Infamous Second Son. Let's talk gameplay first. Let me just say this, it is unbelievably fun. The new powers this time around are Smoke, Neon and the video power. Besides these three powers, there are other powers, however I don't want to give away everything therefore you will have to play the game to find out those for yourselves. As with previous infamous games, when your karmic meter is full, just press down on the d-pad to launch into a special move. And I must say that when Sucker Punch first showcased these special moves prior to the launch of the game, I was a bit skeptical, but after playing the game, I must say they are fucking amazing. There is the orbital drop for the smoke power. This Radiant Sweep for the Neon Power. And finally the Hellfire Swarm for the Video Power. Here comes Heaven, Hell and Delson! Oh man, Eugene, you've been holding out on me. Uh, you know, just something to think about. Heaven, Hell, Delson, and Eugene. I mean, come on. Those special moves are pretty badass. Now let's talk the enemy AI real quick. I have played the game on expert difficulty as well as easy, and I can tell you the AI is well designed. I mean, seriously, just look at this clip where the AI pushes me to gain some space so that he can attack me. And in case you missed it, here it is again. I'm shooting, the enemy AI will come, and bam, he pushes me and attacks me. And then of course there are boss battles. And trust me, they are tough and challenging and fun.
The skill tree and leveling up your powers are managed via a simple menu system. There's also some customization where you can open the menu and change the clothing or the hoodie jackets that Delson's character actually wears in the game. And I must say, they are quite unique. The controls are better than all previous infamous games in my opinion. Blast shards are found in drones this time around and when you shoot one down it even leaves a nice neon trail. I mean how cool is that? And the things that annoyed us in previous iteration of infamous series like pressing the analog stick just to see the blast shards, they've been fixed. You can now see the blast shards as you unlock various sections of the city. They show up as blue dots and it makes life much easier. Even the side missions are fun, like these graffiti side missions or stencil art missions. For these missions, the game makes you vertically rotate your DualShock controller so that your fingers align with the triggers and trust me, it gives you the feel like you are actually holding a spray can. It was fantastic. And these and various other type of side missions like finding audio logs and destroying cameras were a ton of fun. And I found that listening to the audio logs actually added to the story. Therefore, if you play the game, listen to the audio logs. You will not be disappointed. Overall, these type of side missions are all over in this open world. Speaking of open world, the city of Seattle is gorgeous and the view from the top of the Space Needle hasn't looked this good in a while. Thanks to the power of the PlayStation 4, the pop-ins that we used to experience in past infamous games are basically non-existent here and this is purely evident given the shading and draw distances of infamous Second Son and how well the game handles them. What the hell's going on over there? I'm sure pounding the hell out of something. It sounds like a freaking war. Moving on to the story, I wasn't sure as to how well the series would continue the story of the Conduits and part of me wasn't really ready to embrace the new character, Delson Rowe. However, I must say I was not disappointed at all. I don't want to give spoilers from previous games, however rest assured if you have not played previous infamous games, the game will not punish you and for veteran players like myself, it does not dumb it down either. I applaud Sucker Punch in this area. It is very easy to screw up a good story and given that this game is the third installment in the series, Sucker Punch handled this with utmost delicacy and I'm very impressed with their vision. The antagonist or the baddie in this game is this lady Augustine and I must say I actually resorted to name calling whenever interacting with her in the game and I think that is an achievement in its own for Sucker Punch Studios. They created a villain that will get under your skin and will leave a lasting impression. And I will tell you again. I'm told that hurts. Maybe I know what happened to there. No, no, Betty, don't. No. Really? Still nothing. Well, unless you decide that you do have something to tell me, I'll go chat with that nice old lady. But you should know, concrete is especially hard on brittle bones. And if she doesn't talk, I'll just move on to the next one, and the next, until I find someone who does. So do you have something you want to tell me? Or do you prefer that I move on to your friends here? The dialogue and script is very well written. And I must say, in addition to all the serious stuff, it is good to know that Delson definitely has a great sense of humor. Hi, you have reached the DUP helpline. Do you have a bioterrorist incident to report? So, what are you wearing? Is that you, honey? Wait, I know that voice. You're that punk kid who keeps calling. Ah! Why do they even keep answering my calls? So, should you buy Infamous Second Son? Absolutely. The game is pure fun and is one of the best launch titles for the PlayStation 4. Although, I should mention that just like previous infamous games, once I have my platinum for this game, there is not much replay value here. However, it will take you a good long time to get that platinum and the game is totally worth it. 
There is an online component that might entice you to go back, however there isn't much there. But then again, you don't buy infamous games for its online stuff. You buy it for a good story, kick-ass gameplay and just pure awesomeness and the game does above and beyond in all these areas. Delson Row has risen to meet the expectations of the fans of the series and trust me, you will not be disappointed.